What is up my Bodyweight Warriors and welcome back to another episode of Bodyweight Basics, episode 21. Let me put this down. How are we doing? I was away on holiday vacation last week in Greece, which by the way, if you haven't seen, I did, did like a training highlights fun video. <laughs> And I'll link that down below. But in terms of training, it didn't actually miss much. I only did a couple of sessions when I was in Greece and I got stuck into my new program properly a couple of days ago. And I'm currently feeling very sore, which is why there's not gonna be any training in today's vlog. So whilst there isn't any training exactly, I am gonna be doing a Q&A in today's video. So there's gonna be lots of training information. I put out a story on my Instagram yesterday. I got maybe like 60, 70 questions on it. I'm probably gonna answer between 20 and 30 in today's video. We're gonna be answering everything from mobility to handstands to rest times to overtraining. There's just, we're just gonna be answering everything. This does mean it's gonna end up being basically one long episode of So the first question I'm gonna, is two questions that I'm gonna to lump together. The first is from Henrietta Retz, and she basically says, I'd like to ask how you determine the amount of time spent resting between exercises. And then Dario Mayer also asked a similar question, how long are your breaks between sets? And this is actually a question I've been asked in a fair few comments, so I probably should address it. What are we training for? That's what matters. If you're training for strength, you need to make sure you're resting enough so that you can perform adequately in, in the next set. Often for like one rep max temp, this will be like five minutes between each set, but on a general basis, I would say 90 to 180 seconds is a good amount of time to rest between strength sets. If you're going for hypertrophy, you're going for strength endurance work, then you might want to rest a little bit less, somewhere between 45 and 90 seconds seems to be about right. When it does come to strength training, I've got a couple of questions when it comes to the planche. Lee85 asks, what are the best exercises to start planche training? And Malik, with a lot of Ks, asks, what do you think are the best planche exercises? Well, when it comes to starting the planche, you want to be making sure you've got a solid foundation when it comes to pushing strength. So that's going to include push-ups, pike push-ups, dips. Those are going to be your foundation. After that, one of the best and simplest exercises you can do to get going with your planche is something called a pike pull through. To save you time rather than me badly explaining it here, I'll just link to a video about that exercise. It's a really fantastic beginner move for the planche that you can kind of do at pretty much any level. The next question comes from blank. I don't have your name, sorry. He or she asks, can't assume genders in 2018. What is the best exercise for the triceps except dips? Obviously dips are great for pretty much every muscle that's gonna be involved in the pushing pattern. One of my favorite body weight options is an overhead tricep extension like these. They're a great builder for the triceps, but I actually often do them lying on a bench with dumbbells, simply because it's easier to load up that way. Next question comes from N Pierce 88 and he asks, I was wondering how to train for one side that feels weaker than the other. And this is actually a really common thing. Everyone generally has a stronger side and a weaker side. It's just human nature, but right or left-handed, etc. Here's one very simple way that you can train up your weak side. Do half the amount of sets that you're doing in a workout on your strong side, but do the full amount of sets on your weak side. So for example, say your left bicep is a lot weaker than your right bicep and you've got three sets programmed. You may only do one to two sets on the right side because it's already the strong one, but you do the full sets on the weak side. That's how you'd bring it up and eventually it would end up being the same strength. Next, we move on to some mobility questions. There's quite a few of these, but it's definitely some good ones. First question is in regard to pike compressions. Insert pike compression meme that was posted in the Facebook group the other day. I love this one, I think it was funny. Campbell GS asks, what is your recommendations for increasing active pike compression? And then blank, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, basically asks the same thing. Any tips for building strength in end range of pike compressions? So there's two elements to a pike compression. Number one is your hamstring flexibility. The least resistance that you can make the pike compression, the better it's gonna be, and you're gonna do that by having better pike flexibility. So building your hamstring flexibility through something like my hamstring routine that I will link down below is a great starting point. Do you mind? So rude. So there's two exercises that I really like for pike compression. Number one is pike compressions, funnily enough. They're brutal, they're very scalable, working your hands further towards your feet. I'll link a video I've covered them in down below. The second would be hanging leg raises, specifically on a stool bar. So that's when you have the horizontal bars like you would see in a gymnastics gym. What this does is it stops your shoulders from moving backwards and kind of compensating, and it means you really have to use that compression to improve 
your leg lifts. I told you there are quite a lot of questions. Next we have a question in regards to stretching your hamstrings with anterior pelvic tilt. Ilias Faridi, I just can't say names, don't worry about it, he says, should you wait until you fix the problem, this is anterior pelvic tilt we're talking about, or can I stretch the hamstrings in parallel for V-sit, hamstring press, etc. So actually, yes, technically stretching the hamstrings should make anterior pelvic tilt first. However, we can strengthen and we can strengthen through range of motion. So instead of just stretching the hamstrings, we might do something more like a Jefferson curl in which we're gonna be strengthening because we're lifting weight. We could also do something like a straight leg deadlift that's also gonna build range of motion and it's gonna strengthen the hamstrings. So it's gonna both gonna correct the problem but also help to increase your range there. So you can get a good bang for your buck. But ultimately, yes, your body will be working against you until you fix that postural imbalance. Next, we have a question in regards to stretching and-, and, and Today, Junior? Whether you can do too much. Is too much stretching a bad thing? Is that gonna hinder flexibility? Daniel Jaramaric asks, how often can you stretch for maximum flexibility gains? For example, PNF in the morning and the evening, can you do passive stretching? How many times a day, how many times a week is too much? In short, it depends on what you're doing because just like if we are going to the gym and we're doing one rep max every single day, slowly but surely you're gonna completely ruin your CNS and wipe you out. And the same thing goes for stretching. If we're gonna do heavy loaded stretching every single day, then it's gonna ruin us. However, if we do it maybe one to three times a week, then we might see some good progress. And in terms of what you can do on a daily basis, yes, you can do some light stretching if you want, but the most important thing is that you use the range of motion that you want to get. So if you want to achieve middle splits, then try to somehow incorporate middle split range of motion into your day, and that should help improve the loaded mobility results. As like a side question from this, affects in, don't know, don't know how to pronounce that one. He asks, middle splits and head to toe at the same time, can you do it, is it too much? I would say no, it's not too much, but just be careful because the DOMS will be horrific. Going off from the last one about having some crazy DOMS, Stefra Musson asks, would you recommend the six week Emmett Lewis Ballistic Pancake Protocol if you still don't have flat pancake? Um, yes, it works, it's a good protocol. It just, it just hurts just a, a little bit. G Money Movement asks, your thoughts on end range strength training and where it fits into an overall mobility program? I love this question, I think it's really good because I've been using a lot of end range strength at the moment and I think it's very powerful and very useful. However, it's important that you use end range strength with full range of motion. So you learn to incorporate that range as well as get strong in the end range because there's no point being strong in the end range and then kind of floppy elsewhere. You just need to learn to use it. But yes, it can be very effective. So Soul17i asks, how can I improve my overall shoulder mobility so I can do full range of motion dips? So here we're talking about shoulder extension how far we can get down into a dip. First, don't feel like you have to do full range of motion, just doing dips to parallel is absolutely fine. I'm gonna show you an interesting technique you can use which is called a eccentric quasi-isometric or a yielding isometric. What this is basically is the same as if we were gonna do a middle split isometric. So if we're gonna middle split, we're gonna try and hold that position. Eventually over time as our muscle fatigues, we're gonna slowly go a little bit deeper into the middle splits. And the same thing can be applied to a dip. So maybe we go into a dip position on a dip bar, we try to hold that position. We use our feet to assist if it's a little bit hard. And then if we hold that for say 60, 90 seconds, over that period of time, we're gonna slowly yield and go a little bit deeper into that shoulder extension whilst also strengthening and range. It's kind of a cool technique. I'm pretty sure you can Google it and things will come up for you. Thomas Andreini asks, I'm working on my middle split. I'm stuck with my progress. Should I stop stretching for a while? Try different methods. I'm not sure if muscle tighten because it's stretched too much. If you're not seeing progress in your middle splits, Two options, you either carry on and keep going, which is kind of the key to seeing progress and stretching in general, it just takes time. Number two would just be to take a week's rest. In the same way as you might deload from training because training is stressful to your body, you need some time to bounce back and recover. The same thing applies to mobility, it's stressful on the central nervous system. If you've stopped seeing results and you've been doing it pretty consistently for like two months or so, take a whole week rest from mobility training, jump back into it, you'll probably find that the progress will zoom on. That kind of answers also G5O's question, which is including something about overcoming stagnation in training. Kind of, yeah, take a break, take a rest, allow for some super compensation or adjust your training method. Final mobility question is from Smin Smintoli. He says basically, tight QL on my right side, do's and don'ts in terms of stretching. What are beneficial, what are detrimental, is it all good? This is a really important one. Um, there's loads of different ways you can stretch QL, but what is important is the fact that you know that your right QL is tight. And this means that 
Okay, we're gonna stretch our cue out. You're not gonna do the same on both sides. You're gonna stretch more on the right side than you are on the left side because the left side is already looser, the right side is tighter. So you wanna correct that imbalance. This is really important for stretching. You don't wanna stretch every single muscle in your body. You wanna stretch the ones that are tight and then the ones that you wanna improve for your goals. We're back outside because I'm gonna be answering some handstand questions. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to demo something in this one. So first question, we've got, hey Tom, how do you incorporate your skills training into your workouts? Which is kind of linked to my man, Leonidas, who asked, is it a good idea to train handstand every day, low intensity, moderate duration, like 15 to 20 minutes? So those two questions to answer, I like to recommend people train skills, handstand work, three to six times per week. Kind of depends on you. If you're a beginner, start out with three times, you've got to condition your wrist, you've got get used to the movement, but as you get more advanced, you can add more frequency in there. But it will vary from person to person. It will vary on how important this goal is to you. Three to six times, three times is a good amount. I personally stick to about four. You can take up to six if that's like your main focus. Speaking of which, this kind of has an impact on what I got a lot of questions about, which was wrist health. So Neft Arrow says, how do you strengthen your wrists? Which kind of leads me into another question by Rick Fleur, which asks, my question is, regarding forearm recovery for handstand training. Do you have any tips on that, etc.? Well, number one would be don't be doing handstands too much too often. It takes time to condition your joints. So start with two or three times a week and then build up from there. Number two would be adding in a wrist strengthening routine. And I do this as part of a warm up before every handstand session so I get clients doing. And it's my wrist routine and I'll link a video to that one down below. So if you combine those two, that's fine. You should be able to get adequate rest and you should have some decent strengthening in there. It may also be worth to say that you might wanna add some soft tissue work because the forearms is often a place that can build up quite a lot of tension. So you might wanna release that, especially if you're doing a lot of pull-ups, a lot of grip work, a lot of handstands. It's a lot of pressure on your hands. Kind of leading on from this, uh, Evo Lab EJ asks, I'm curious about your thoughts on wrist straps. If you have any experience using them, I have used wrist straps in the past. I don't anymore because my wrists are strong and I would prefer to strengthen my wrists and progressively load up versus sort of using straps to compensate. Next, I got a few questions that kind of all lead to the same answer. The first is from John Ask. And he asked, I do have a strong handstand, but it is a banana form with the shoulders way too far forward. Do I have to work on shoulder mobility, or wrist mobility, or go back to the basics? Kind of a combination of the two. Definitely overhead mobility. Shoulder mobility is the key to a handstand. You gotta think about from the ground up. If you're gonna have some sort of lack of breaking of motion there, it's gonna affect the whole rest of the handstand. So make sure you have a decent overhead position. You can get your arms nice and 180 degrees overhead. From that point, I'm gonna show you a little drill that you might want to use. So this drill I'm about to show you is to answer that question I just had about learning how to balance in a straight handstand, but also to answer Macro Mark's question, which is any drill to learn how to balance better on the handstand. I have an okay line, but can't hold it for more than four to five seconds. My man Kyle asks, tips on achieving the handstand. I would like to get a five second hold for summer. So this is a good drill for you. And then finally, Philakiris asks, I'm at the stage where I can kick up against the wall. And I try to touch it and balance. However, I fall backwards or go into banana. So. For all of you, this is gonna be a great drill. And also if you're trying to achieve your handstand, trying to get more time balancing, this is gonna be a great drill for you. It's called a toe pull. So you're gonna need a wall, which I've kind of got behind me, and you're gonna to need to be able to kick up or get into a chest to wall handstand. So once you're in this chest to wall position, all you're gonna do is push tall, as tall as you can, pike at the hips so your hips come over your shoulders, and then you're just gonna try and lift your feet off the wall into a straight line. So the idea with this drill is that number one, you need to pull your feet off the wall, don't push with your feet. And number two is so that you can't banana handstand. If you're in that chest to wall position, you won't be able to do this drill if you try to do a banana. You have to learn how to stack your shoulders and then pull your feet off the wall, find your balance, fall back onto the wall, keep repeating. It's a great way to get more time balancing in the handstand. Oh, the last handstand question is from Simon Brad. And he asks, how is your one arm handstand progressing? How are you finding the journey in the suck? To be quite honest, I haven't trained it for the last week or so. I've had a little bit of inflammation, again, in like my right shoulder, my bicep tendon. Brought on from filming that dip tutorial about four weeks ago. That absolutely destroyed my shoulders. Caused a little bit of inflammation here and it hasn't kind of recovered. So I've just kind of taken a week off to allow that to happen. It's feeling better. I'm going really to pain doing handstands at the moment. Albert Einstein has that saying, which is like insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, but kind of applies to the handstand. You just need to keep 
drilling and drilling and drilling and eventually you kind of understand that skill you understand the balance and eventually you get it it just it just takes time right we're coming to the end of it. we've done strength mobility we've done some handstand stuff i've kind of just got a few random ish questions Question comes from brooke and ben first of all we asked your experience with frc how you integrate it into your training do some car stuff i do a lot of joint articulation stuff that's not necessarily frc that's been around for a while um, i generally do it first thing in the morning i do some shoulder cars some hip cars various joint articulations that's kind of where i stand on it and then i mentioned about end range strength earlier on Number two from Brooker Ben is your opinion on cardio. I don't notice much of it in your channel and I want to know how you train cardio. Short answer is I don't because I don't really see the point. I try to stay active throughout the day. So I'll go for a walk and I'll do this and I'll do that, but I don't see the point in running. It's not the best way to build cardio. If I was gonna train cardio, which I do very occasionally, I'll do something more like strongman training, like farmers carries and some other things just to build up work capacity. The main reason I don't train cardio is because it doesn't really fit with any of my goals. Speaking of goals, this kind of leads me into my next question, which is from Gray's area. He asks, for somebody who wants to be a strong bodyweight athlete, don't we all? Um, let's say one arm handstand, good flexibility, one arm chin up, front lever, planche, handstand push up, <laughs> some, some hefty goals there. Uh, what do you think is an ideal work to life training, life balance? He says, I've just started a 40 hour a week job Training usual 15 hours a week, which by the way, that's a lot of training. What do you think is the most bang for your buck way to split up training? Yone asks, how do you program for a no time day? Sometimes come back late from work. I don't have time to get a full session in. How would you go about doing it? So I think my answer to both of these questions is gonna be the same. It is just focus on your goals. You only have a limited amount of time to train. You only have a limited recovery capacity. There's no point trying to do everything because you'll make crap progress in all of them. Focus on you know, one, two, three main goals and focus really hard on those, make good progress on those. And to be honest, the amount of time you actually need is like you know, three to four 45 minute sessions a week and you can get a pretty decent amount of work done if you're focused. And then from there, just think about the concept of free gains. If I get strong at doing say a handstand push up, then that actually probably will help increase my planche, for example. And if I get strong at a pull-up or if I get strong at a front lever, they'll probably help each other out as well. There's some relationship and free gains here. So a bit of clever programming, being focused, you should be able to get it done with minimal amount of time in the gym. But that's it for the Q&A. That's all the questions. There was a lot of questions to go through. I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours. I tried to, you know, there was literally like 60 or 70 questions. But thank you to everyone who did ask their questions. If you do want to ask some questions, make sure you follow me on Instagram at the Bodyweight Warrior in future if I do another one of these. If you did enjoy this video, then let me know that you liked the Q&A and you found it interesting and leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Or if you want to chime in on any of the questions and leave your opinion, it's a great place to join the conversation. As well, you can hit that thumbs up button, support the channel, show that you enjoyed the series, enjoying these type of videos. Right next to it is that subscribe button if you wanna join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe at over 115,000 strong, which is just crazy to me. Also, if you're about in London in July, myself and Ulrich are hosting a hand balancing and bodyweight skills and strength workshop for a couple of days. It's gonna be a masterclass. We're gonna go over everything in a lot of detail. So if you wanna join that, I'll put a link to that as well down below. But that has been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.